Hello everyone, and welcome to your second Swift programming tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about how we can hold on to a collection of objects in Swift. So in lesson one, we talked about how we can hold on to an int, a double, a string, right? We can make a constant or a variable value, and we can just set it to be whatever we want. And that is how you can hold on to a single thing. You can hold on to an object. But if we want to hold on to a collection of things, maybe we wanted a bunch of strings or a bunch of numbers, right? Then if we want to hold on to that somehow, we need some kind of collection. And we can use either an array or a dictionary in Swift to represent this. So let's just begin. So if I wanted to make, um, let's just say, you know, I got to go shopping to get some groceries and uh, I got this big shopping list. So I can add a bunch of things to it. I can say I need butter, I need milk, I also need eggs, right? And, you know, classic shopping list example. And there you go. You got a collection of items. Now, all we had to do to make that was use the quotes, or not the quotes, the square brackets like that. And then you just enclose all the elements you want. So you just list something you want, comma, another thing you want, comma, and then, you know, keep going like that, ad infinitum. So with that, we also want to be able to get elements out of this list, though. So if I wanted to get the first element, I could say list, and then square brackets, and I could say zero. Now that might seem a little odd. You're like, why, why did you say zero for that? I mean, it seems odd. If you've never programmed anything in your life, using that seems odd. But this is known as zero, zero indexing, basically. So what how arrays work in Swift and many other programming languages is that the elements you would say this is the first the second and the third element however this is the element at the zeroth index so butter would be the element at the zeroth index milk would be the element at the first index and eggs would be the element at the second index and you can see this if you actually quick look at by right over here so we can see butter is zero milk is one eggs is two so that's just, it's just something you'll have to get used to, but it's a very, it becomes very natural, trust me, when you get used to it. All right, so there we go. This is another just example of how we can use multiple variables. We don't, you know, don't be scared to use them. You can just grab an element out of the list and set it to be something else, right? We're now saying object, or obj in this case, is going to be the first thing in the list, right? So just get used to and play around with doing stuff like that. Now, I also might want to, you know, change this list. You know, I'm making a cake, and I actually don't care to have milk in this cake. I don't need milk, or maybe I have enough milk at home, whatever. Um, I do not want to replace that with some milk. I wanted to get some sugar. So what I'm saying here is I have the element, or the element at index 1, which is milk, or the first index, and I want to replace the element at the first index with sugar. So I'm, if I looked at my list now, you'll see that I'm left with butter, sugar, and eggs, because I now replaced sugar with milk. I can also get the count of this, and this is actually just a property of an array. You can ask any array for its count, and it will give it to you. And as you can see, we just got three back from that. So the array says that there's three elements in the array. Great. Now, what if I wanted to add a bunch of elements? I can say list.append, and this will allow me to add something into the list. Let's say I actually made a mistake, and I really actually need a milk for this recipe, or I don't have enough at home. And you'll notice that Swift is actually yelling at us. It's not happy about this. And the reason is that we use the let keyword to define our array. Now, if we want to be able to add or remove elements from the array, we need to make it var, or variable, meaning we can add or remove, we can change the array. It's kind of weird, though, that you can change the elements that are already in it, so even though you use the let keyword, you can change the array as long as you're not changing the size. As soon as you have to change the size, though, you must use the var keyword. But let's carry on. There's our list now. We have all four elements in there. That's that dot, dot, dot at the end that you see there. We can also remove elements, so let's remove the last element, and uh, you'll see that actually now we just have butter and sugar and eggs, so and I really couldn't make up my mind of whether I wanted milk or not, uh, so I guess I 
cited on the case that I don't. We could also remove all of the objects if we want, but um, let's say remove at index in this example. And uh, remove at index, we'll just take um, you know whatever index we want to remove from. And what we want is uh, to remove the thing in the beginning. So I'll say remove index at, or remove at index zero, and that will remove uh, the first guy. So we can see that, there we go, we remove butter. And if we looked at our list again, you can see that there's a bunch of different guys. So we have sugar and eggs, right? We move remove butter, we're left with sugar and eggs. Very simple. Now you might be wondering, what are all these weird things that I'm doing here? You know, I'm just saying list out of pen. Where did this append thing come from? You know, why would I know that? Well, to be honest, you wouldn't really right now. Um, but these are known as methods. And the methods allow you to alter or change something about the object that you're talking about. So we're basically saying, on this list, let's append milk. Or on this list, let's remove the last element, right? These are all defined by the array type. And in case I wasn't clear about that, uh, this is actually its own type. So just like we have ints, doubles, strings, the list, if we look that up, actually is a type array. So if we look at array, we'll notice that it is of type string. So uh, basically, sorry, rather that means that arrays are containing the string. So we have a type of array, array and it contains a bunch of strings. If I made a list, though, um, which I can, of, I'll just say let array, or let's call it nums, um, if I wanted to make one with a bunch of numbers in it, I could do that, and you'll notice that this is an array that contains a bunch of ints, right? Now, we can't intermingle these different types, though. We can't have, um, you know, we can't make an array that's of strings and then add in um, a different type later. So. Another common method that you might use is list.insert. Um, and so if we are on our list right now, we have a list of a bunch of strings. So I can, you know, add a different string in. So let's add in flower, for example, and I'll add it at index one maybe. And you'll notice that if I go to print this list out one more time, we have sugar, flour, and eggs. What this example does is it puts the flower in at index 1. Remember that index 1 is not index 0. There's an index 0 and then there's an index 1. It will put that element in there and then it shifts anything that was there before down the array. So what you'll notice though is that what I can't do is I can't say insert 1, for example. Now this will yell at me basically complaining that I can't add an int, right? The number 1 is an int type. It's not a string. This is an invalid operation. So you can't intermingle the types that are in uh, once you define an array. Okay, so that's pretty much everything I wanted to address with arrays, I think. And uh, I'll just, uh, just remove some of these calls to list, I guess, for now to make some space. And we'll talk about dictionaries. So. Um, what we have for dictionaries is this is a different type and it's a different way of storing values. And of course, arrays and dictionaries you have, you use in different instances. So an, a dictionary is just as you would kind of think it behaves as. If you think of a dictionary in terms of, you know, I look up a word and I get a definition, right? If I looked up the word aardvark and a definite, do, if I looked up the word aardvark, in a dictionary, I would get the definition of aardvark, aardvark. And the dictionary in Swift works essentially the same way. So let's just create a dictionary. I'll just call it dictionary. Again, just arbitrary name, nothing important about that name. And I want to make a dictionary. So I'm going to have a bunch of keys and values. And let's just make, let's say in this example, I'm keeping stock of how many fruits I have at home or something. So let's just say I have 10 apples. And we'll also say that I have some bananas. But I only have maybe four bananas, for example. All right. So what we've done is we've just created a dictionary, and it contains apples and bananas. All right. Now, how does this relate to a dictionary that I was just talking about? Well, think about the aardvark to its definition. Right? If I looked up a word in a dictionary, I get a definition. 
the dictionaries in Swift work the same way. I'm looking up a specific key. The first thing here is the key that I might look up. If I asked how many apples do I have at home, I could look up the key for apples, and the value is what I get back. So I know that I have 10 apples, for example. If I look up how many bananas do I have, I will get back four for that. If I go to try this out, we can use essentially the same syntax that I did for the arrays. I just use square brackets, and then I ask for the key that I want to actually look up. So if I want to know how many apples I have, I can say, hey, we actually have this sort of, well, I'll just talk about this in a second, but we can see that we have 10 apples in this example. If I wanted to use bananas, so bananas, you can see that I have four bananas. You'll notice that this type is kind of odd. It is showing you a sum and then four. What this actually is is an optional type, but don't worry about this for now. Just know that it gives you back the value that uh, you might have. The reason it's saying sum four is because you're not guaranteed to actually get something back. I could ask for cookies, for example, and there's no cookies entry. So what's a dictionary going to give me back? It doesn't even know what a cookies is. So that's fine. It'll tell me that it's nil. So these are just different things that you'll see when uh, you're working with dictionaries. But don't worry about it. Just think of dictionaries as a very simple example of I want something to look up, which is my key, and I got to find the value. So I look up the key and I'll get the value back. Now I can also change these values. So if I wanted to say dictionary, then I can say, um, I don't know, bananas. And I can now change this to be, uh, let's say I now have five bananas, for example. Now you'll notice Swift will actually yell at us though in this example, and the reason is we cannot actually change what's in a dictionary without it being a variable. So if it's not variable, we can't use it. It's a constant dictionary, we can't actually change any of the values that are in it, and uh, you'll notice that this is kind of different from the arrays example, right? In an array, technically I could have changed what was in the array even though it was in the let keyword, but it's a little different when you're working with dictionaries. You can't change anything in the dictionary. Once you define it, if you define it with the let keyword at all, you cannot change what's in the dictionary. So all you have to do though is set it to be the var keyword and you can now change what is in the dictionary. So if I set bananas to be five, you'll notice that now I have bananas, the key for bananas has a value of five. And of course, Apple stays the same way. I can also add different elements to this. So a neat way of doing this is I can just add a new key like this. So I can say cookies and whatever value I want this to be. So let's say I got 20 cookies at home because I'm a fast food junkie. And uh, we can see that we get some with 20. And with that, if I look up this dictionary in quick look, you'll notice we have five bananas, 10 apples and 20 cookies. So there you go. That is how we can use dictionaries and they're just arrays and dictionaries are just different types, different things of achieving collections in Swift. One last thing that I'll note about a dictionary is their type. And again, I keep going back to this idea of types in Swift, but you just have to kind of experience it because Swift in Swift types are very important and you can't ignore them. So just kind of get used to the syntax. A dictionary is not surprisingly actually of type dictionary. So there is a type called dictionary. You'll notice then we have those angle brackets again, and you might be able to guess a little bit of what's going on here though, but the first thing that we have is the key. So the first thing that's listed in those angle brackets is representative of the key that we're holding in this dictionary, and it's of type string. The next thing that we're holding is of type int. So that's because in our example, right, we had apples, which is a string, and then an int right after that, which was the value. So this dictionary can hold string keys and integer values. That was That is basically what we just defined. Again, the same rules apply. You cannot change the values once you've defined it. Once you've said that there are string keys and integer values, you can't start adding, you can't mix with other values. So if I wanted to add integer keys and then string values later, it doesn't work. I gotta make some kind of different collection to do that. But anyway, this is your tutorial on uh, arrays and dictionaries. If you have any other questions around this topic, feel free to leave your questions in the comments section below. I'll be glad to answer them, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. See you then.